Yeah, right around here. We, you know, the stock market would take these fucking death drops, these fucking sharp death drops, death drop, death drop, just intraday and it panic. And it just looks like the end of the world is coming. Uh, and we see more of this shit. Like, I, like that's indicative of, of people afraid that we're at the top because there's, you know, there's no underlying confidence to be had, you know, and like, like the market's been overvalued probably since fucking 2000, probably since 2011, right? After we had that 2011 last dip and then surge, right? The market's probably, you know, like likely been overvalued since then, but nobody cared, right? Nobody really gave a shit that the market was, um, let's see, pull up a week. Nobody gave a shit that the market was really overvalued because the economy was really strong underneath it. And the, the stock market like works, Oh, I want to phrase this sentence. The stock market is always, um, it's the stock market's job not to value something on its current um, value, but its future value, right? I mean, that's, I mean, that's the present value, right? The, the first thing you learn in, in, in finance, the, the present value of future cash flows, right? So, you know, like you, you know, all of the stock market is forward looking, right? When a stock has news that, right? And you know this, as, when a stock has news, good news comes out, the stock surges, to where it should be valued in the future, right? The stock doesn't wait for those earnings to realize, right? People see the news, it's good news. Like, oh, this good news means earnings are coming in the future, so I wanna get in early, right? That's the, that's the whole shtick of the stock market is that it pre-prices uh, future valuation. So as long as we're overvalued, people really don't care as long as the train is coming up, right? That, that's been the story of the stock market for the last 10 years. It's overvalued, but the market's good or the, the underlying economy is good. So it doesn't matter. Really, really doesn't matter that we're overvalued because the, the train is, you know, underneath will eventually catch up, right? Even though you know, we're ahead of the train, we're pulling the train. The train is moving really, really steadily on its own pace. You know, then 2020 happens, right? And we get this, this flash crash and then people buy the dip because it's a huge dip opportunity. Um, you know, because they're like, oh, you know, there's there's lockdowns, blah, 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 business, business is shut down, but it won't be like that forever, right? It will not be like that forever. So what do people do? They buy the fucking dip up because it's supposed to not happen forever. And, you know, obviously people were pricing it in to be better by now. And it is better. It's definitely a lot better. But um, uh, here, you know, here we are, fast forward another year or so. And like, we're, we're starting, it looks a lot better on the weekly chart, huh? All of these dips are like, what are you, what are you panicking about? Um, but fast forward a year later, you know, the economy isn't as strong. Like it's still getting there and, you know, we're still pre-pricing. But the fact that the, that the economy has not caught up completely and we have a couple new fears, now the train behind us is not as strong, right? We do not have that same literally driver that, you know, we had in the last 10 years of the stock market. Now, there's this, fee, you know, there's a hurdle that we have to get over. Like once everything, once the, just the thought, you know, of, of lockdowns and shutting stuff down and travel restrictions kind of shit, as long as that's on the table, there's still going to be questions and fear um, on, you know, on, on our, you know, have we pre-priced too much, right? Like you don't have that necess that same fear, you know, before COVID, but now we do. And it's, it's, it's starting, like we're seeing these, you know, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we see these intraday just boom, boom, boom on the spy and they do get bought back. Um, but that's just what that's indicative of, right? And it's, and it's creating, you know, very volatile conditions for swing traders to, to say the least. Um, yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. Like that happens to every trader all the time. You know, you kind of, you're just like, you know what? I kind of like this. How do I get in? And then the thing is, you don't like it so much that it, you know, if you like an idea so well, it almost doesn't matter where the entry is. Almost. Of course it matters. But it, you have a, you're a lot more liberal because you just like the idea when it's kind of like a passing, um, um, fleeting, fleeting kind of idea. That's when you really have to narrow down on the risk to reward so that you can justify taking the trade. And, the, and my problem was I just couldn't, like, I was just like, what, risk one? probably gets there and then that starts entering your mind and these these head games that you play with yourself um are really uh i don't know what the, what's with me i can't think of the word i want to say 
not toxic, but um, just they get in the way. They definitely, they get in the way. They get in the way of the free flow. I have an idea, boom, I'm gonna take it because I have the idea and all I gotta do is manage my rest. I mean, look, I, I could, I, I mean, I could have went in 100 shares, right? What, what am I gonna do? Lose, lose a hundred dollars if it goes to zero, right? You know, like that's the thing, it's self debilitating, right? Like, what do I do? Like, I, I could have bought a hundred shares of that shit, right? Like I have the idea, why not buy a hundred shares, right? You know, because, and then you eventually say, well, I don't, you know, it's a hundred share. That's too small. Fine. 200. Right. And that's the kind of game you have to play yourself when, you know, you, you see a trade where you might want to take a trade, uh, but you just can't decide on where or something. Uh, you should always start from the bottom and work your way up. And uh, one, I mean, cause honestly, what the fuck's the problem? Like, even if that's so beneath you, a hundred shares on a dollar stock, which it is for me, but um, so what? Like it's here at 192 now. Like my idea on this one was correct. I thought, you know, I thought this one had potential to run. It did. I could be a hundred dollars richer, right? But just the, uh, eh, it's not worth my time kind of thing. Like uh, all ideas, you know, that you have, you, sh you, you know, they deserve a little attention. This is a little kind of trader that this, this, this wasn't really planned, but just a little, you know, trader psych psychological talk for yourself like this. This happens to everybody. Like the, these game, these these conversations you have in your head, they never go away. So yeah, when in doubt, I mean, hundred shares. If you have an idea and you can't decide the price or the risk, hundred shares. Just take it, see what happens. Right? That may build confidence for next time. Right? Because see, now I didn't win on this one, even on hundred shares. I didn't win on this one. The next time I have an idea like this, I'm I'm gonna be exactly where I am now. I'm gonna be exactly where I am. I'm gonna say. Uh, but had this one worked, I'm going to be like, well, fuck. Yeah. I mean, this is the trend. I mean, RETO did it. ARDX could have done it. Uh, you know, this one is a trend and I got ARDX. So here's the next one. I'm going to buy this. And it's, you know, just the fact, if you can get this one, then it makes taking the next trade easier. Right. Okay. I keep wanting to go to that. All right. Yeah. And so in essence, this market seems pretty quote unquote easy in the sense that no one is having a super hard time, uh, probably with the exception of swing long, swing longs. Um, uh, but, you know, we're heading into the end of the year. So, it, you know, we just had a crazy week, um, Thanksgiving, crazy couple of weeks building up the week before Thanksgiving was really good. Thanksgiving week was really good or really volatile. 